Hey everybody, it's Josh with the Firearm Convention. Um, just doing a follow-up video for some of the questions that we got um, that unfortunately I couldn't get to during the Great American Outdoor Show. Um, so while we were there, um, basically it was sales representatives that were at the Winchester booth. So they weren't um, allowed to discuss the nitty-gritty aspects of the 350 legend and, and a couple of the questions that we had. So instead of, you know, and they didn't want to be on video at all, you know, they, at all. They said no. So anyway, I'm going to answer some of the big questions today. Um, I've been in contact with some, with some marketing manager with Winchester and I'm hoping to help, you know, clear up the air a little bit more about some of the, some of the random um, misconceptions or questions that we're having about the 350 legend. Now I'm going to preface this with Winchester is going to be doing a Facebook live video later this week. Um, and they, they're looking for you to, to join in. They're looking for you to, um, ask all these questions again, get it straight from the horse's mouth, guys. Uh, I'm just, I'm just a guy that, you know, is trying to get some answers for you. I'm not a paid Winchester representative at all. Um, so I don't have any skin in the game. Anything I'm going to buy for the 350, I'm going to buy it with my own cash, you know? So anyway, let's move along. Big question was when are these firearms going to be available for purchase? And I was told April, April's the month where we're going to be able to get the XPR um, I don't know about the Ruger uh, American. That's supposedly coming out in 350 Legend. You know, I've I've heard rumors of that. I haven't got in contact with Ruger, and I most certainly can do that. Um, so I'll try and get in contact with Ruger and see what we got going on. Now that being said, I'm I'm hearing a lot of questions about the ballistics. So I've got, you know, I, while I was at the Great Outdoor Show. I got this little pamphlet um, from Winchester Booth. And on the back of it, it has um, their information right here. So let me see if I can square this up for you guys. There it is. So that's all the ammunition that they're coming out with. And there it is at the muzzle. You know, if you want you know, energy, trajectory, velocity from the muzzle one, two, and 300 yards. So I'm letting that up there for a little bit in case you guys need to pause the video, want to look that over, want to take a screenshot, do whatever. So, okay, there it is. So let me read on this. When you see your trajectories at um, 300 yards and you're seeing 31 inches, 28 inches low, 33 inches low, understand that this isn't a cartridge you zero at 100 yards. Um, it's not. This is a cartridge that you're going to zero at roughly 150 yards. Now that's going to give you, at 100 yards, rounds that are going to hit roughly an inch and a half to two inches high. And I mean, to some people that sounds like the end of the world, but if you, if you look at it in a, in a real perspective, two inches, if you look at your finger, two inches is about, you know, the second knuckle on your index finger. So that's about an inch, that's about an inch. So that high at 100 yards. If you miss a deer because you're two inches off, you were probably gonna miss anyway. So that's what they suggest. And then the numbers flatten out pretty good. It, I mean, it just that minor two inch high, you know, adjustment at 100, at 100 yards really flattens this out to where you're only um, I believe and I'm, I'm going off the top of my head. So if anybody wants to plug numbers in, don't quote me on it, but I believe with the 150 grain deer season XP, you're only about 12 inches low at 300 yards, 200, 300 yards. You're about 12 inches low. And at 250 yards, you're only about eight inches low. So with 150 yards zero, I mean, it's point click. Uh, so, Anyway, 
that was the information I got from them. Also, I linked in our Facebook group the um, the 2019 catalog from from Winchester, and it's a digital version. It's it's free to to look at, download. They want you to they want you to look at it. But I also picked up another one. They're out now. It's the uh, paper paper version, and it's the exact same thing. The exact same thing. The only difference is. One's a hard copy. So if you write Winchester, you might be able to get one of these in the mail. Okay. They normally, companies normally give these out. Um, a lot of times your gun shops will have copies of these sitting around. Because, you know, Winchester wants you to pick us up and see all the latest and greatest stuff that's in their catalog. So there's that. Like I said, I'll, I'll put a link below for the uh, online catalog as well. That way you've got it and you don't have to go searching for it. So, let's talk about um, the Model 70. Uh, the retail sales representative wasn't sure if this was coming out in the Model 70. So, I've gotten in contact with the market manager that, that, that I've been talking to, and I asked him. And he'll get back with me. You know, I'm going to guess that it's all going to depend on how how well the sales are for the 350 Legend in the XPR. If the sales in the XPR are through the roof, the cartridge takes off, they're going to tool up to do it in the, seven, in the Model 70. I mean, that's, that's my guess. That's no inside information, nothing like that. So there's that question down. Now, um, let's move on to 223 Brass. The bit more, this is the second largest question that I've been getting about the brass, about this cartridge, is the brass. Why did we not use 223 brass? Well, I can point to a couple of you know, examples, okay? And I think these are pretty, pretty solid, all right? So there's a couple reasons. Reason one... Uh, there was already a round out called the 357 Max AR, which was basically a 223 case cut off to 357 maximum length and loaded with a bullet, you know, of 357 diameter. Great round. You know, we'll discuss that round in our group as we will anything else because it's very relevant to what we're going to do with the legend. But the guys we're finding, and you can do some internet search if you'd like, you know, I'm, I'm not pulling this out of my hat. But the guys found that because this, this case is truly a cylinder, you know, if it wasn't for the throat, you could cut this, this chamber with a 378 drill bit, okay? It was 378 from base all the way to the, all the, way to the bullet, all the way to the, to, to the neck. And guys were finding when they loaded bullets longer because there was more space in a, in a 223 magazine, an AR-15 magazine, they were getting failures to feed. Um, you you know you were having you know the rounds going all over the place, and that's on their their forum. You can look that up for yourself. When they got them the overall length seeded out farther, they were having failures to feed. So, I believe that's one of the reasons why they didn't go with two twenty three brass is because they wanted a, a taper on that case. Because the tape at the back, you know, at the chamber, you know, where the where the projectiles start to feed in, is larger than the neck area. I mean, just think of how precise that AR-15, you know, because that's what most of these you know, uh, 357 Max ARs were chambered in. Just think how precise that AR-15 had to put that round in to the barrel extension. It had to flip in correct. I mean, everything had to work perfect to get that round to hit the the chamber right. And when Winchester elongated that cartridge, uh, basically what they had, what they did is they, I think they ran into the same problems in R and D as the 357 AR Max guys did. So they gave the case a taper. Now, that's the feeding aspect in an AR-15. Um, it may have been a feeding aspect in a bolt action as well. I mean, a, a push feed bolt action isn't really any different than an AR-15, except. That you're that you're running the action a lot slower with a bolt gun, so it may have been a feeding issue all around. That said, um, 
I also believe it's a headspace thing. Most of the time, you don't see a high-pressure cartridge that only headspaces on the case mouth. You know, look at the 9x19. It runs at about 35, 38,000 pounds. Look at the 450 Bushmaster. It runs at 38 to 40,000 pounds. Uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, same thing. 45 ACP, same thing. You, know, you have a lot of cartridges. 30 Carbine is another one, same thing. It's when it headspaces solely on the case mouth, it's very finicky as to pressures. It's very finicky as to, you know, feeding, case length, all that fun stuff. That's a problem. So by putting a 12 thousandths taper on this case, what they've essentially done is made a cork. Okay. You know, it's, it's got a taper to it. So as it goes into the chamber, the taper of this case, which is 12 thousandths total, six thousandths on each side, will not allow that cartridge to move forward much past the taper of the chamber. So it, it assists with headspace. Now, yes, this does headspace on the case mouth, but if you look at the SAMI print for the SAMI spec for the, the chamber length, the chamber minimum is 1.710 with a chamber maximum of 1.720. So there is, you know, 10 thousandths worth of play for this cartridge, you know, in, for a chamber, in a chamber. And I, I believe the taper also assists with headspace, just because there's no way that that, that that case can move forward since it's on a taper. Okay, so that's, that's my thoughts on that. I'm sure Winchester will extrapolate on that. And I mean, they're going to tell you, that, well, they're not going to tell you, but I also believe that they wanted to sell their own brass. They wanted to sell their ammunition. You know, why, why make it ultra easy for us reloaders? And I mean, they know people reload their stuff. They're not dumb. But why, why on their end lose money to the guys like myself who's going to reload this cartridge? I now have to go buy at least five boxes of ammunition to get 100 pieces of brass. And that's sales that I wouldn't have done if I could have bought Starline Basic Brass, uh, 223 Basic Brass, without ever having to get their ammunition. You know, so it is a sales thing. It really is. And I can't fault them for that. They've went through the research and development. Sure, the ground was laid with the 357 Max AR. That's all well and good. But... I can't say that I fault them for wanting to make some money off of something they brought out. I mean, look at all the, all the money they're doing in marketing. So they want to get back some of their money. Can't fault them for that at all. Now, let's talk about the bullet-to-bore deal, okay? Now, I talked to you know the Winchester marketing manager about this, and he gave me a pretty good explanation on this. And I'm going to read between the lines a little bit, Okay. So there's states like Ohio that's a straight wall case state. You can't hunt with anything that's not a straight wall case. But the state requires a minimum bullet diameter of 357. Okay? That's the minimum bullet diameter. So they spec this cartridge out because that's, that's the minimum in a lot of states, I believe. Don't quote me on it. I'm, I don't live in those states. But I'm pretty sure the minimum bullet diameter is 357 for a straight wall. So, they wanted to hit that minimum number of 357. And, you know, now the bore, you know, the, the actual barrel is going to measure at 355, like a 9mm. So, the question becomes, why would they do that? Why would they have a bullet that specs at 357 and a bore that's 355? So, let me see if I can get a little... little heads up on that. I believe they did it one for the legality to say that this this cartridge will meet the 357 bullet diameter minimum per the SAMI drawing. That's where it's at. Um, I also believe that they decided to go with a 9mm um, bore because this is the same bore as a 9x19, 9 9 parabellum, you know, whatever you want to call it, to allow AR barrel manufacturers to move forward you know, with getting this round out. Now, I touched on that in an earlier video. I believe that. 
So, because the more guns they get on the market, even if it's not Winchester, you know, repeating arms, rifles, the more ammunition Winchester ammunition is going to sell. And the more ARs they have out there, the faster the ammunition is going to be burnt through and the more ammunition they sell. But here's a dirty little secret about Sammy Specs. Something that I didn't know until I talked to, you know, our marketing manager. He told me that the Sammy Spec allows for a bullet to be three thousandths negative to the spec on, on their website. So if you see a 357 diameter bullet for the 350 Legend, it's a possibility that that bullet can be up to three thousandths smaller. Now, if we take three thousandths from 357, that's 0. .354. Now the bore diameter makes a little bit more sense. You may see some of these bullets coming out from Winchester themselves at 355. That doesn't mean it's illegal for Ohio or all these other places. It's legal for these other places because it's a 357 spec cartridge. That's what they sold it as. If they'd have sold it as a 355, it would not be legal. But because they sold it as a 357. They can easily say, we're within Sammy Spec on this ammunition. It is what it is, and it's still Ohio legal. It's still Iowa legal, Michigan legal, whatever. So this is the same with a 357 Magnum, which takes a 357 diameter bullet. Um, you know, it can be a 355 bullet. Um, there's been Colt revolvers that's came out with 355 bores. You know, it is what it is. It's not a big. It's not as big a deal as people bring it out to be. Now, the the three fifty eight diameter bullets. A lot of people are, you know, hung up on this. Well, can I use a three fifty eight diameter bullet? Well, I asked our, our marketing manager, and he said it's best to follow Sammy guidelines, which means don't. But that's that's company talk. You know, he's not going to say, yeah, do something that's that's outside of Sammy's spec, and I'm going to approve that. When something blows up because you're a dipstick, you can bring it back on me because you have proof. That's that's him being lawyerly, and I completely understand that. With a 357 Magnum bullet, what we need to do is understand that the throat on this cartridge, and you can look it up on Sammy's spec, I've, I've, you know, seated the, the internet with that with that cartridge drawing um, is understand that the that the throat on these chambers is going to be 0.3575. So we're very close to 358. But we need to understand one thing. It's not 358. If you were to take a 358 bullet load it in a cartridge, and put it in a 357 and a half throat. There is one thing that can happen, when, and, it, and it's it's a lot like, you know, you've heard of the, the C explosions with the large magnums, a little bit of slow burning powder, gun goes boom. It's similar. If a bullet cannot get forward movement in the throat before it tries to expand, and yes, even copper and lead bullets do expand some, Nothing like a cast bullet, <clears throat> pardon me, nothing like a cast bullet, but they do obturate a little bit. So if they try to fill that throat, and, and a 358 is already going to be larger than the throat to start with, it's a very good possibility that the wall tension will not be able, will, will overcome the forward friction, you know, and, and that'll create an explosion. Your gun will go poof in your face. And that's because you've created a bore obstruction. As soon as that bullet starts to move, there's no way for the wall tension to stop the bullet. And it only has to move a little bit. But that's just how it is. If that bullet's lodged in that throat hard, before there's any forward movement, there is a possibility to have an explosion. That you know Your gun can go pop. So, guys, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that to start with. You can still use a 358 diameter bullet. Listen to this. 
I'll repeat it. You can still use a 358 diameter bullet. What you need to do is go to Midway USA, go to Brownells, Natchez, Crafts, pick your online retailer, pick your local gun shop, buy a Lee 357 cast bullet sizer. That's what you need to do. Run these 358 bullets through that 357 sizer. That's it. A little bit of case lube on them, like as you know, little Hornady one shot, you know, your favorite lanolin mix, whatever, doesn't matter. Spray it on there, rub it on there, do whatever you got to do, size them up, perfectly safe at that point, okay? Perfectly safe. So yes, you can use a 358 diameter bullet in this 350 legend, but you have to first size that bullet. And I personally, that's the that's the route I want to go. I think there's a whole lot better. Uh, <clears throat> I think there's a whole lot better uh, bullet selections in the 358 line, which is why everybody wants to run a 358 because you've got 180 grain, you know, soft points from Hornady. You've got the 250, the 200 grain Hornady FTX. You've got you know spear hot cores. You've got nozzlers. You've got a lot of bullets in the 358 neighborhood that you know could really you know benefit the 350 legend so that that's the little safety note run them through a 357 sizer load them and shoot them you'll be fine okay um also i forgot with the ballistics all ballistics were ran on a 20 inch barrel you know even even with um all the other all the other you know comparisons they were 20 inch barrels um that's just a little aside. Another little a little deal here is um, people are comparing it, you know, to the 357 Magnum, 357 Maxim. That's awesome. It's going to have more rear end than those, no question. Um, but a lot of people are still comparing it to the 450 Bushmaster. And if you're wanting to know, is this cartridge good for me? As as an individual, as a hunter, I want you to go research the 35 Remington. We're going to be within 100 feet per second of 35 Remington numbers from a 20-inch barrel, 35 Remington. So I want you to look at those numbers of a 35 Remington. And, you know, there's plenty of people out there with experience with the 35 Remington. Just type in Google 35 Remington 4 deer. You know, you're going to get like a ridiculous amount of results for that. And everybody's going to tell you it's wonderful. So if, if you think you have the ability to run a 35 Remington and you're outside the, the straight wall states, you know, you could run a 35 Remington, you could run a 308, you, know, you could run whatever, you know, but you're uncertain about, you know, how this compares to other cartridges because people are comparing it to the 20 gauge, they're comparing it to the 12 gauge, they're comparing it to the 450 Bushmaster. And that's all because it's, you know, that's coming from the shotgun and straight wall only cases. But for those of us outside that wire, compare it to a 35 Remington. And don't just compare ballistics, because you might say, well, the Remington's going to have about 100 feet per second over this. Okay, well, now go find ammunition, because the 35 Remington's going to be about $20 to $25 a box, whereas this Legend is going to come in for plinking ammunition around $10 a box, and the uh, deer seasons are going to be about $22. So give it a shot, you know. If, you're, if you ever plan on shooting your gun a lot, you know, the 350's going to probably be a better choice. <clears throat> So, I mean, there it is. One guy asked me about uh, in an, on the other video, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little shout here. He said, "Well, compared to the 4570, okay, Winchester 4570." I'll get my book. So, pardon me as I move along here. 4570 government 350 legends not too far below this. That's the nice thing about having the literature, guys. So, the 4570 government 300 grain bullet. 1,880 feet per second. Now let's go to the, the deer season. That's 2325. For the 350 Legend, 150 grain deer season, that's 2325. Velocity at 100 yards is going to be 1968. Velocity at 200 yards, 1647. And velocity at 300 yards is 1373. That's the 350 Legend with the 150. Here's the 4570 Government. The 300 grain ballistic tip, okay? 1880 starting out, 1523 
at 100, 1240 at 200, and 1056 at 300. Now, at 1050 feet per second, this is where this nut, that, that bullet is, is gonna, it's gonna hit the transonic neighborhood, somewhere around 250 yards, which means this bullet can destabilize. Um, long range shooters know this for a fact. You, know, you can have a bullet destabilize going from the supersonic into the subsonic area, and that's the transonic zone, and your bullet will start doing wonky stuff. You know, you might, it might not destabilize in a 4570, but you might go from being able to hold at 200 yards about three or four inches, you know, out of a single shot Thompson Center contender or something like that, to at 250 yards, you're seeing 10 inches, and you don't know why. That's why. So let's, let's move on to velocity. Now that we've done velocity, let's move on to energy and trajectory, okay? Now, I haven't looked at these numbers. I've yet to look at them. This is just off the top of my head. So I'm feeling that the 4570 is going to carry a good bit of energy because it has a bullet that's twice as heavy. So, but I feel the trajectory is going to be given to the 350. So here we go, the 350 Legend and the um, foot-pounds of energy. At the muzzle, 1,800. At energy at 100 yards, 1,289. Energy at 300 at 200 yards, 903. And then at 300 yards, it's 628. Now, some guys are going to say, ah, oh, 628, you need 1,000 foot-pounds for deer. People handgun hunt with a 357 Magnum and 44 Magnum all the time with four and six inch barreled revolvers. This is at 300 yards, the 350 Legend is going to hit like a point blank 357 Magnum. You know, I wouldn't want to get shot point blank 357 Magnum. So now we're going to move down to the 4570 300 grain ballistic tip. So we've got. 2,350 foot-pounds at the muzzle. No doubt there's more energy there. At 100 yards, we've got 1,545. At 200 yards, we have 1,023. Now, hold on, guys. 1,023 at 200 yards is only 120 foot-pounds more than the 350 Legend at 200 yards. 300 yards, 628 is, is the 350 legend, remember that. But the 4570 only has 743. So comparing it to Winchester's ballistic tip round, once we get out there past 200 yards, these two cartridges even off pretty pretty good. They even off pretty consistently. So there, there's that. And then let's look at the, the short range trajectory. The 350 legend, inch and a half low at 50 yards due to your scope height over bore. Zero to 100, down 7.6 inches at 200, down 28 inches at 300. Now let's move on to the 4570. It's going to be 0.8 inches high at 50 yards, and that's because they're probably going to be open sights. That's like, I'm assuming that's the difference is the 350 scoped 4570. They're assuming you're going to be using like a guide gun or something like that. That's really not a big difference, though, because at 100 yards, we're still zeroed. So at 100 yards, we got a zero. At 200 yards, we're down 14 inches. Now, that's twice, twice the drop of the 350 Legend. Right there is a problem. And then you have 50 inches worth of drop out to 300 yards. The 350 Legend is 30. So we're talking almost two feet more drop at 300 yards. So even if this round, even if the 4570 has more energy on target than the 350 Legend, if you miss a deer, that energy don't mean anything. So the 350 Legend really beats it in trajectory a lot. Um, now I know there's going to be guys that say I can load my 4570 you know to Winchester loads or I can buy a Corbon or you know whatever ammunition, but sure can, and you can beat it all day. You can beat the legend all day. But I want to tell you, uh, it is what it is. That's that's like that's like saying well you know, I I've got I've got a Chevy 350 and I got a Chevy 454 and if I soup up my 454 your 350 can't touch it. No kidding, you know cubic inches always wins. You know, there's no replacement like displacement. The 4570 has more displacement. 
So if we're going to buy factory ammunition, and like I said, I'm going I'm going right off right off Winchester's book here. So the the, the 350 Legend is right here. The 4570 is right down here. So I'm going off their information. So anyways, guys, I've rambled on long enough. I really appreciate the time that you have taken to watch the video. So give us a like, comment, subscribe down below. You know, it, it helps the channel. We're not getting anything out of this. I'm just doing it for fun. So anyway, guys, I'll see you in, in the groups, and you have a good one.